should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. What up? What's happening? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And on the phone line, from the Roger and JP show, heard middays, 11 to 2 p.m. on 102.5 The Bone resting bitch face is on the phone line and she is always outspoken and speaks her mind so this is going to be a kick-ass segment what's up rbf thanks man yeah um that's always been my thing i kind of just say what i feel when i feel it now is that a thing that has gotten you in trouble over the years or have people always appreciated the charm i would have to say that it's a healthy combination of both responses. It's gotten me into a lot of trouble, but it's also a breath of fresh air for a lot of people, like you said. Now, what made you want to get into radio? Have you been outspoken your whole life? Like for me, I've always been the guy who would say it like it is in school and get sent to the dean's office. So now, was that you? Were you someone that always kind of wanted to go into radio? I never in a million years thought I would ever even work for a radio station until my last year of college where I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I should have probably one more internship under my belt. And I was driving in the car one day and I had always listened to BAB my whole life. I grew up with Roger and JP. They are my heroes. And it kind of just dawned on me that even though I don't know what I want to do, I kind of knew where I wanted to be. So I applied for a company that I knew that I wanted to work for. And when I got there and I saw you know, how a radio station operates, I was more interested in the production side of things, the behind the scenes, the creating all of these things. And then I met Roger and JP and JP's like, you're angry. And I like that. And they never forgot about me. So when they started the bone, you know, three days in, they were like, you know, come stop in. Let's see how it goes. And just, it took off. What was the immediate response that you got? Was there a lot of hate online that people were thrown back by how outspoken you are or was it pretty good? I would have to say it was pretty awesome. There was a few things here and there. The Bone Facebook page (laughs) can be ruthless, but for the most part, it was just overwhelming appreciation. Isn't it odd, that Facebook page? Like, you would have a very flattering pic, and people would be like, this bitch is ugly. I'm like, say it to her face, you pussy, you know? Right, exactly. (laughs) And and it's fine. It's totally fine. I get enjoyment. Me and my friends read them together at night. It's just. It's not something to ever get too caught up in. but I any- kind of get the vibe that everybody over there, Brett, Roger, JP, Ted, you guys just kind of laugh at it. Like, it's just weird. It, you gotta. You know, that's the worst thing. And there was a day here and there that, you know, um, we would get a phoner in and somebody would say something specifically to me. And I would be, I was so overwhelmed because it was so positive. And then just one negative thing hit me. And I, it consumed me for the remainder of that day, and I wasn't myself. And if you let that creep in and take you over, you're not you're not producing what people want to listen to you for. Isn't so, it weird that happens when you get like a nice comment and it boosts your ego, but then one person says, "Oh, you're a bitch," or "Oh, you're weird, Hoppy," and then it just like makes you angry. Like, there's no reason it should, you know? Absolutely. That's just one thing I've like noticed is you're not going to always get everyone's approval. But us radio people, we have egos because we're talking into this mic to get everyone's approval. So when one little person who's unhappy with their life calls into the show and rips us, we really shouldn't get mad. But it's just the human thing. You're going to get mad, you know? Right. And I've I've spent most of my life dealing with that. I I. I would say through most of my childhood, all I did was really seek approval. And when I didn't get it, that's kind of when I turned into a little bit of a rebel and my mouth gets me in trouble and all that. But um, it's really it's not something that I take negatively anymore. I try not to, at least because it'll alter who I am, but also because I'm so big on everybody feeling however they want to feel and expressing it at that moment. And if you think I'm a bitch today and I suck. (laughs) Good for you, man. Tell me about it. You know, I love it. (laughs) 
<laughs> Would you it's say really all right. there's this new trend with fake outrage where everyone's offended by everything? Because I hear you guys talking about it a lot, and I really think it's becoming an epidemic, and it's getting bad, you know? It is. It's definitely getting worse. Um, I just don't like people who are jerks. But everything other than that is fair game to me. Not, you know, but I can't speak for other people. It is unfortunate that nobody can really joke around anymore. It is because that's, it's funny. There's yeah. funny things out there and nobody's kind of doing it to be malicious, but that's just the air about things now, whether it be race or sexual orientation, religion, politics, it's, nothing is fair game anymore. And it's a lot less fun when everyone in the room has some kind of emotional stake in something and they just choose to let it piss them off. I don't operate that way because I don't want to. I can't make that choice for people. I wish everyone was like you because I hate the people who go to comedy clubs. Like you guys were talking a few months ago about Rosie O'Donnell making that joke and everyone was offended. You're going to a comedy show, not some Republican debate. Like get over yourself. You know, it's a joke. It's words. Absolutely. And she is somebody because she made a joke about having autistic teenagers or something like that. Maybe not in great taste, but you know what? She has personal experience with it. She would be crucified either way, whether she had a stake in it or she didn't. And that sucks, no matter where you are, even if you're on the stage. That sucks. And now you get to see Bone TV. So during that segment, I got to see JP all fired up and all angry. What's it like in person when you see that man with his rage? I love it. I can't. I just, when he gets angry, it's the same thing when he met me and I was angry. It's just, it's good energy. You know why? Because he's passionate about stuff. That's really cool to sit next to. I'm not going to tell you it's not a little scary sometimes when he really gets going, but there's a lot of passion in that man, so I admire it. What's one time when you were scared of JP? Never really truly terrified, but there are obviously coworkers don't get along sometimes and things don't go the way you think they should, and he can just scream. Or just pretty much anybody in the building can rub him the wrong way, and he goes off the handle. It's awesome. He's sort of a no-nonsense type of guy. I wouldn't say he's a no-nonsense type of guy. He's one of the funniest people I've ever met. He's a good joker, but, you know, when it's time to be serious, he, he gets stuff done, and you know when he's trying to be serious. So I would never cross him that way. I give him a lot of respect. Would you say that Roger and JP have been some good mentors to you? Absolutely. They're my heroes. They were my heroes before they even ever put a mic in my face. When you grow up listening to Roger and JP, and then you're sitting there in front of them talking to two major markets on the radio, like how surreal is that? It's extremely surreal. And I remember the day that I met them like yesterday and I tried to keep my cool. So, you know, it was just, it was too much. I left there and I like called my mom. I was like, oh my God, I met them on the first day. And that was the whole reason I interned there, to be honest, because they were telling me, oh, you can really only um, do the morning show with the top 40 station. And I was just like, no, no, I, I want to do BAB. And they're like, yeah, but we don't really give interns to their morning show. They don't really need it. I was like, no, no, I'm going to need to work with them. <laughs> and I made it happen. And it, it's just I still wake up every morning. I still am nervous to go to work. I still I still walk in there like I'm just meeting them for the first time in my own head most days. What is one day or what is one segment that comes to your mind so far that will be one of the best moments of your life so far on that show? Um, A particular segment? Overall, maybe a call, maybe a rant, maybe someone that called in. Overall. Overall, I think it has to be my boyfriend had just left for the Coast Guard and it was my first day back at work and I was really upset. And I was trying to keep it together and they were calling me names because I took a day off, but I really needed to. I wasn't ready to come back to work and joke about my life yet. I just needed one more day to myself. And just, I guess, collectively, them being there for me, making me laugh, all the support that I get on Twitter, the phone calls, it was just the way that I felt going to work that day, I feel should be the way anybody feels whenever they get up and go to work. And it was just that day will always resonate with me. And it's why I continue to do this. And I work my butt off at night and on the weekends so I can come in and live that dream Monday through Friday. Is and it, I, three hours, I wish, honestly, that it was way longer. 
Is it ever hard, though, with Bone TV? Like, you're a good-looking girl. It's the Bone. It's about girls, boobs, talk radio. Is it ever hard, though, on some days that maybe you get two, three hours of sleep and you have to look presentable in your mind on the TV, or do you not care? I, I do care, but there are just some days where I don't have it in me to do the makeup or really put it together and but you know what i use that and then they put it against me like oh thanks for showing up in your pajamas today and it kind of it works out but i try to give that camera in the corner of the room as little attention as possible or otherwise i'll freeze up if i know that i'm being recorded and actively focusing on that i'll be weird because i don't like to be on camera i guess Now, I want to ask you this as being a woman. For us dudes, we get up, we shower, we put a hair gel, we brush our teeth, we get dressed, we leave. How long does it take you, at average, for any job in the morning to get ready? Uh, For a girl, it's much different. We have to, like, coordinate things. you got to put makeup on. Your hair has to look good. You want to smell nice. I'd have to say, on average, I don't get crazy with it. There have been days where I've hit that, like, 45-minute hour mark and be like, all right. Are you serious? I take, like, four (laughs) minutes. It's easy. Right. I strive to do that. I strive for four minutes. There are some mornings, though, that it's just, I'm going to brush my teeth. Maybe I wore this last night. Maybe I didn't. But I'm going to wear it to work today. Are you one of those girls where you sort of do it at, like, the red lights, where since you don't have a lot of time when it's the red light, you put on the eyeliner, next red light, you put on the makeup, or do you get it done at the apartment? Nope. The minute, if I'm out the door, that's it. Go time. Your shot's over. You got to hit the day as is. Because there's nothing worse than the girls who are, like, doing the makeup at the red light, and it's the same thing as, like, a drunk driver where they say, I'm a good drunk driver. Like, there's no such thing as being a driver who isn't completely focused on the road, but they say, oh, I'm good at it, though, you know? Yeah, that's an asinine remark to make, and just focus on the road. Plenty of people stuck driving, period, as is, with, you know, hands tended to and eyes on the road. Don't put makeup on in the car while you're driving it, no less. Now, I would be lying to you, RBF, if I said I don't text and drive at times, and I'm really trying to cut the habit, and I'm really trying to not have an addiction to my ego on social media. Do you ever find yourself checking your phone all the time just because there's days that Twitter blows up when we're on the bone, you know? Um, I, I will say that I am constantly connected to a fault. But I have to tell you, I am I love my Twitter. I love that people want to talk to me after 2 o'clock. You know, I love that I have relationships with some of these people, you know, outside of just the 140 characters that everybody's out there to see. You know, I get a lot of private messages. Some of them are not exactly what I'm asking for. But, you know, I try to acknowledge everybody. And some people just need to talk. And I, I'm, I'm big on that. If you ever need to talk and... I'm the person you want to talk to. Who am I to be too busy for that? So I would say constantly connected to a fault, but I do it with the best intention. I don't think it's really because of my ego. I, I'm, I do my best to stay very humble. I think that I'm a very small component in this whole thing that I love to be a part of. So I kind of tell myself that and keep me grounded. Now, going back to the direct messages that you get, how often do they go down a weird path? More often than I'd like them to, Hoppy, but, you know, it comes with the territory. (laughs) Yeah, I get some weird messages, too, where people want to, like, go to the gym with me or work out. That's because I'm a dude. I can't imagine what it's like where dudes are, like, hitting on you, maybe saying some innuendos or wanting your number. Like, does it flatter you, or is there a point where you get creeped out? Uh a good thing about me is that the bar is extremely high for you to try to creep me out or offend me. So I kind of just roll with all of it. I can't promise you that I'm ever going to answer it because sometimes I'm really just completely speechless. Like I don't even have words for this, but some of them are really hilarious and I live for it. What's the weirdest message you've got to know? The weirdest message I got was actually probably about two or two or three weeks ago. And this guy, I guess had just started to listen to uh, to watch Bone TV and was just like, you know, I just want you to know I've been listening to you and I really like you. And um, but I started watching Bone TV and I really don't think you're ugly at all. <laughs> I thought you were going to be a tr- I thought you were going to be a troll. And like I I lost it. Just hilarious. 
I thought you were going to be a troll. Like, thank you so much, man. I'm not a troll. <laughs> or I love when I meet, I guess, quote unquote fans, like, yeah, let's say a concert or whatnot. And they go, you're a lot nicer than I thought. You're not a douchebag. Like, I just love how the bone fans just say it like it is, you know? Me too. It makes me feel right at home. That's what I appreciate in people. Life's too short. Say how you feel. Yeah, I feel the same way, too, because I've just been thinking about it, too. Like, it doesn't really matter what people say. Like, we have one life, and I don't know why people get so mad over social media. I worked for a show, Rovers Morning Glory in Cleveland, and I let the fans get to me, and I would be depressed all day. But now it's like we have one life. We have 24 hours. Who gives a crap what anyone says, you know? Absolutely. But you kind of got to go through that in the beginning because then you need to get to that point. You have to achieve it. You have to mentally go through that process and be like, all right, people are not going to like me. They're most certainly going to tell me. And then the ball's in my court to react a certain way. You know, that's not for most people. It's not an inherent characteristic. It happens over time because you had to learn the hard way. Somebody had to splatter your feelings all over the wall before, you know, you can collect them again. Now let's find out more about the RBF off the air. What do you like to do in your free time? Free time is actually not something that I have a lot of. Um, I, of course, am on from 11 to 2. I leave the house at 9.30 in the morning. I babysit now from 3 to 5, so I go from that job Aww. to babysitting. Very cute, I know. And then I actually am a cigar lounge hostess, so I go back to work at 6 o'clock and work till about midnight or 1 a.m. And then I come home and I take a shower because I smell like a cigar. <laughs> and I try to get as much sleep as possible, which doesn't always work out because there's things that are distracting me. My computer is still on. Oh, my God, I need to pay this bill. Let me throw this load of laundry in. Oh, I have to put this away. The next thing I know, it's 3 a.m., and I have to be up at 7 to do show prep. And it's just that's kind of how I live life. And then I still do promo for my radio station on the weekends, and a day off is hard to come by right now (laughs) how do you not burn out like if you have any free time what do you do to like relax because for me it's either watching netflix or like meditating or going to the gym um i pretend that i'm a gym person (laughs) that's a lot that's that's a lie that i tell people that i belong to a gym or belong to a gym but i don't really do physical activity because i'm always so tired i tried meditating but i still think i'm like a little bit too cynical and angry. To you got to do it. Do Just do it. Even if it's a minute, it's a progress. By no means am I some guru at it, but trust me, even yeah. five minutes is good. Yeah, no, people tell me that I really need it, so I think about that. I mean, it's in my mind. But when, I, and when I'm alone and I'm free and I want to decompress, I'm either having a cocktail somewhere or I am taking a drive by myself. Totally unrelated because don't ever drink and drive. I have a breathalyzer with me at all times because I'm neurotic. But I take a lot of serenity in just driving by myself, listening to music, going somewhere pretty. I have a spot by the water. I have a bench. It's been my bench for years. That's my jam. That's awesome because I drive across the Howard Franklin when I'm hyper and I can't sleep. And I just look at the water and say I work in Tampa Bay. I feel like people our age, us quote unquote millennials, don't really appreciate life. And we're so connected to the phone that sometimes we need that time to unwind and just go out cruising, listening to our favorite music, you know? Absolutely. And it, it, it's just very common. You don't get that from a phone. You know, the phone is very, it's just too much of a habit. It's too much of a routine. I do it all day. It brings me stress. So when I get that minute to myself, the last thing I need on me is my phone. Now, I have the weirdest p- playlist. I have Come On Eileen, I have Lil Wayne, and I have Thank Dead Mouse. Midnight Runners. Damn right I do. I have a whole mix of everything. What's on your playlist? Um, Pretty much, well, I'll tell you right now that I genuinely appreciate that you listen to Dexie's Midnight Runners. I also have it on my iPad. It's the greatest um, song ever. I lift to that. Yeah, it's because it's amazing. Um, I'm a big 80s freak, so that's kind of in that genre. Um, I like a lot of like rhythm and blues, like Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, and then classic rock all the way. Are you not into hip-hop at all? I can't. You know what? I like the old school hip hop. Like I like Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and you know, I'll listen to Onyx and 
things like that. But today's music, basically anything past like 97, I'm good. You can keep it. I feel like you're very unique. Like you would have fit in perfectly in the 80s. Like you're not the typical millennial. That's what makes you so special on air is you're not just some basic white girl who drinks coffee and listens to the latest Bieber song. Yeah, no, that's out. And I and I I don't even really relate to those people. They don't really relate to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't say they're <laughs> simple-minded, but it's so refreshing when you meet someone who's our age and is just completely different. Yeah, and it, it and it works out and it doesn't because, again, I kind of stand out. There aren't a lot of people in my age group that like the same things as me. You know, when I want to go to a concert, it's because Kiss and Def Leppard are doing it together, you know? Nobody wants to come to that concert with Why do you though. like Kiss? It's the most overrated band. Get out of here. And, and I, by no means, are a part of the Kiss Army. I'm not. But I, I love, love, love Def Leppard, and they just happen to be doing that concert together. I have actually seen Kiss twice by accident. Once with Aerosmith and once with Def Leppard. And I still don't like Kiss. What do you think of Nirvana? Because I've been thinking about this lately. I think if Kurt Cobain never killed himself, he would have ended up being on, let's say, celebrity rehab, and he would have been washed up. I just think we saw the best of Kurt Cobain. You know what? I th- I literally actually was just thinking about that after because we had a, a long discussion over the conspiracy theories of his, of his death. I I don't wish anybody a short life, whether they, you know, peaked or plateaued at some point. Everybody should have a full, fruitful life. Nothing should ever come to that end so abruptly. So I think that, yes, you might be right. He might have hit his peak at that time, and the music was just never going to be the same afterwards. But I would have loved the chance for him to just be like one of those old rocker has that still plays shows and you can still go see it. And it's awful because he's like 100 on stage, you can croak any minute, but he's still there. That option is still there. So I don't think necessarily he peaked. He might have done some good things after that, but I could see where you're coming from. How much do you think it's his ex-wife's fault, and how much was it his brain? Because a lot of people blame Courtney Love, but I sort of think it's also the fact that he had a lot of mental issues. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I just I have what's in front of me. So this year, or the tail end of last year, was big on Kurt Cobain documentaries and the conspiracy theories of being drudged back up. So I watched Montage of Heck, and I also bought the album. I listen to vinyl. I have a record player. I bought it on vinyl, and I listen to it. And it's it's very dark, and it's very sad. So at one point, I see what he was working with and the inner workings of his mind, and that was a dark place. But then when you watch the other documentaries, and it's just, you know, he had this beautiful baby. He had friends. He had everything. He might not have wanted to make music anymore, but he might, he probably didn't want to die either. So after seeing the last documentary... I unfortunately feel strongly that Courtney may have had that arranged. And I loved her. I thought she was just a beautiful hot mess. And, you know, you don't want to think that, but it's quite very possible that she had a hand in it. Now, I want to ask you this. What is your take on Trump, Ted Cruz, Clinton? What's your take on all these buffoons that might run America? Well, for starters, I'm terrified. Um, I don't like Trump. I don't like Clinton, and I don't like Cruz, which puts me in a pretty. pretty what about Bernie Sanders? State. I just I don't get it. I don't really get the hype over him. You know, I can I, I can understand why he appeals to younger people, but not all of it really makes sense. And I was a journalism major a couple of years ago, so when this was going on, I was deep deep rooted in it. And then I left that school, and I just like kind of relinquished my political appetite and I don't pay attention as much as I should anymore because I just, it's a circus. I don't even know what I'm watching half the time. I don't understand, but I mean, the thing too is everybody hates Trump and that makes complete sense. He's a dirtbag. Everyone hates Clinton. She's a scummy person, but we seem to overlook how much of an imbecile Ted Cruz is. Like, I think I almost hate him more than Trump. Like, I despise Ted Cruz. He (laughs) bothers me completely. 
You know why? He has a very unnerving face. Like that's not the that's not a face of a president. His face makes me almost angry. And I don't even think of him because in my mind, I've already told myself that he's out and I've kind of just narrowed it down to Clinton and Trump. So I don't even consider him. But yeah, I think you might be right. He's a little. I feel bad for like Rubio and Jeb too. They were basically just ran out of the race by Trump being a complete piece of dirt who makes fun of people. Like they had no defense. They were not ready for his bullying RBF. Right. And I don't know why that's, the like the criteria for getting past those primary debates and everything that you have to kind of be able to handle that who is is that really how worlds run each other they bully each other i mean it's it wasn't very professional i didn't find it funny and it made me not pay attention i know it sparked a lot of excitement in some people because it wasn't boring for once but at the end of the day it seems boring because it's important and it's dense and it's convoluted and it's got a lot going on, but these are issues that need to be handled the right way, not with money, not backing people into a corner, not putting on a show because there's a camera in your face. There's a time and a place and it ain't here and it ain't now. I still don't know what's going to happen, but it scares me who's going to run this country and whether they're going to run it into the ground or somewhere else is pretty unnerving. My thing too is, we all hate on Obama. It's easy, but I describe him as the backup quarterback that will win you a lot of games. He will always be in the league, but he also will throw bad interceptions. Like he may have done some bad choices, but I also think he did what he could. What do you think? I'm thinking that I don't know anything about football because homegirl just doesn't have it like that. I don't know. I've tried very hard to understand it. I just like math it's too much so i don't understand the analogy but i've never hated on obama i've i would say i've kept quiet because at the end of the day i think people just get off on hating him at this point it's the it's just the thing to do which i don't agree with because he has done some good you know i won't attribute all of it to him i won't say he's the best president ever and everybody needs to shut up you know i don't i think we're past the progressive thing that he was the first black president and that was his only claim to fame and blah, blah, blah. I mean, people say awful, awful things, but I don't think he deserves all the hate that he gets. But I say that one time and one time only for the sake of this phone call. That's like not a conversation I'll ever have with people because I'm not going to sit here and personally defend the man either. Now, before I let you go, where do you want to see yourself in five years? Are you going to be in radio? Where do you want to see yourself? If I picture what I'd like to be, doing in five years i'm going to be honest with you i would wake up every morning and i would still be with roger jp and brett however i had to make that happen that's what i would want but above all wherever i am whatever i'm doing or whatever my situation is happiness i love your attitude it's just you're so laid back and you just appreciate every second so if people want to see your tweets because you're very open-minded on twitter where can they find your Twitter account? I think my handle is RBF low underscore radio. And where can they listen to the Roger and JP show, both in Tampa and in Long Island? Uh, 1025 The Bone app. You can watch Bone TV online, I believe. I have done it once. I made a chat room screen name, and that was it. But it's a pretty cool setup. But from the phone, you could stream it, or you could do it online, the computer. Well... RBF, I love listening to you guys, and I love how you say it like it is. And in 2016, we're all a a bunch of uptight wussies that don't want to hear the truth. So keep doing your thing. I love the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for listening, and thanks for having me on. It was an honor. Uh, The honor's going right back to you. Keep up the good work, RBF. Thanks. Have a great day. All right, you too. All right, bye. Bye. And that was RBF from the Roger and JP show on 102.5 The Bone. If you want to hear the show, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is go to theboneonline.com, watch it on Bone TV, or listen live, or get the app in the Google Play or iPhone shop and search up The Bone, 102.5 The Bone. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out. Happy Hour. Happy Hour.